Radio. You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. And good morning and welcome, or I should say good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. You are here live on Pet Life Radio's Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff. I'm your host, Dr. Jeff Werber, for the next 30 minutes here on Pet Life Radio. And um, we're here for you. We're here for you. You're here for your pets. We're here to talk about anything you want to talk about. We're here to um, answer questions. So if you have any questions you want answered, questions that maybe you are unclear of what your veterinarian was talking about, or you have a tough decision to make, as I helped a client do the other day, now's the time to ask. The advice is free. It's pretty good. Free is good. Free is good. We always like free. And uh, I want to thank our sponsors for allowing us to be here. ProSense Pet Products, veterinary quality products you can find at your over-the-counter mass market venue like your Walmarts and your Targets. It's fantastic stuff. And also Kong. Kong toys are everywhere, and uh, they are great for your pets. They are safe, great for their teeth, great for their mental development. When they're puppies, they can chew on them. They are practically indestructible. So um, thank both Kong and ProSense for allowing me to be here with you every single Sunday, 9 o'clock out in the West and noon out in the East and wherever you are in between. As a matter of fact, next week, I'll be coming to you live from location in Park City, Utah. I will take a break from the slopes snowboarding so I can be with you live. And again, let's talk about pets. So um, hope you're having a great holiday. The end of uh, one is tomorrow. That's Hanukkah. And Christmas is two weeks away. It's crazy. So um, actually less than that now because it was two weeks from Friday. Just a lot of things and tips we're going to go over. We're going to save those for next week so they're fresh in your minds about things you can do to keep your pets very safe during this holiday season. And trust me, as I mentioned it last week, between Halloween, Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, Christmas, there are ample opportunities for our pets to get themselves into trouble. And interestingly, all of these situations are 100% preventable. So we want to make sure that you are well-equipped to know how to do, what to do, when to do, and we can have a really, really safe Christmas this year. So you know, as we're waiting for you to get a hold of us, and it's very easy to do. Firstly, you can pick up the phone and dial just an easy phone number. It's 877, again, toll free, 385-8882. Once again, 877-385-8882. You can also go on to PetLifeRadio.com, click on the Ask the Vets tab, and there is going to be a link you'll see down there. Mark, our wonderful producer, has laid it out for you. Click on the link, and it will ask you to invite and join us right here live on Google Hangouts. When you're on Google Hangouts, and if you have a camera on your computer, most of you hopefully do, or your phone, however you want to get a hold of us, we will. you'll be able to see us. You'll be sitting right here. It's as if you are sitting with me in a consult room to talk about anything you want to talk about. So that's a really, really good idea. So it's Google Hangouts. The link is there for you on Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff on Pet Life Radio. If you are still very, very nervous You have an opportunity to just type your message, but I want to hear from you. I want to talk to you. Have your pet with you. You can even, you know, sort of show me what's going on. By the way, this is something that's happening right now, and you're going to be seeing a lot more of it. There are going to be websites that you can go on. You can speak live, real time to a veterinarian, and it's going to be very reasonably priced. So if, if you're having that issue with your pet, and you're not sure, you really have to go to the vet, or let's say it's two o'clock in the morning, and you don't want to pay just to walk into an emergency room, it's going to be a couple hundred bucks. And you want to know if what you're seeing is really a problem. You can actually talk real time to a veterinarian. You can bring your dog up to the the, uh, screen, let the veterinarian take a look at what you're looking at, like a look at that laceration, look at that mole, look at that lump, look at that bump, whatever it is. And you can get some really good free advice to, um, do we need to run in? And, and if so, is it, does, is it an emergency? Can I wait till tomorrow to see a regular veterinarian? Whatever it is. And um, that's going to be a, a great service. Of course, I'll be working with one of them, but something to keep in mind. So it's not weird. It's not weird at all if you have your pet and you're sitting right there and you're joining us on the show and you have that burning question. 
Log in, join us, and ask the question. You know, I like to comb the news, as many of you know, and um, I read some very interesting stories. Now, one sadly doesn't upset me. Well, it doesn't surprise me. It does upset me, but it doesn't surprise me as much as I would have, you know, I would love to say, oh, my, that's old news. That doesn't happen anymore. And that is the following. A study came out, and I'm going to read the stats to you because it's so amazing to me, that professional oral dental care, all right, it's still a challenge, whereas... Only 33% of dog owners, that means of all of you listening out there with dogs, only one third of you take your pets to your veterinarian for teeth cleaning. And what do the other 66% do, 66, 67%? I'll tell you what they do. They will either just give dental treats and dental chews and not go anywhere, or they will have their groomer clean the teeth. Now, We have to talk about that for a second because this really, really upsets me. I find it so amazing that with all the new data out there that many of you either don't believe or just, I don't know what to say or how to say, but here's the study that got me. First of all, let me go backwards a couple of years. I have a few of my technicians have been, quote unquote, I use this term loosely, trained by these non-anesthetic dentists. And- I've watched them work, and I have to tell you, as far as what you see when you pick up, they do a really nice job. And I'm, in fact, amazed at how they sit on the floor, they kind of cocoon the animal, and they feel comfortable enough, and they're scraping away. And then they do their little polishing. And I have to tell you, after they have done their treatment, it looks pretty darn good. And I know, hey, I'm a consumer. I know also that if you thought that what you were getting was just as good as that veterinarian advocating full anesthesia. Nobody wants to anesthetize their pet as often as that. And guess what? As we also know, and I'm sure you've heard, that most of the times that there is a surgery complication, it's not the actual surgery, it's the anesthetic. So that is probably one of the most challenging parts of of any procedure is making sure we have a safe anesthesia. And again, every dog is different. So, you know, when you read those dose ranges of how much to give, yeah, perfect for 99% of the 99% might be a little dangerous for 1%. So anyway, having said that, people are more comfortable knowing that they're going to go to the doggy dentist and have the pet's teeth cleaned. And I hear all the time, well, gee, doc, I don't go get anesthetized when I get my teeth cleaned. And there are dentists, they do a really good job. Or dental hygienists, they're licensed, they do a really good job. And I don't disagree. However... When that dentist or that hygienist is scraping away, they are, as you know, first of all, they're measuring your pockets in the gums and they are scraping way up there. And you're, you're, you're sitting on your back, so you don't really see what's going on, but they always have a gauze sponge in their hand and they are wiping that scraper. You know you feel it. It doesn't hurt, hurt, but you feel it. And maybe sometimes it does hurt, hurt. And if you look at that gauze sponge, it's full of blood. And they don't want to see it. They, they kind of like hide it when they do it because they, they don't want you to see all the blood, but it's there. And for many, just sitting in the dental chair is so anxiety provoking. What do they ask for? They ask for laughing gas, the happy gas, the nitrous oxide, where the doctor's working away or the hygienist is working away and you're just feeling no pain. So now let's think about the dog. So they're, if they are wrapped up. If they are, the, I've watched them on the floor and they're sort of getting a, they look like a wrestling match with the legs wrapped around the dog's body and the, and the head and the front legs are, are under blanket. Yeah, they finally might give in, but I'm telling you right now, it's stressful. But here's the clincher. Here's what, what sort of changed my mind. And though I have the right hygienist to be able to do it, and I, I've seen them, they do a really nice job, but I have my concerns. Here they are. A veterinary colleague of mine, uh, Dr. Jan Bellows, is a veterinary dentist, board certified veterinary dentist. And he did a study and it was really fascinating. I I believe it was the first of its kind. I have no proof of that, but it's the first one I know of where he identified via his veterinary clients, his the groomers in his neighborhood, in his area, identified a fairly substantial number of dogs that go to these groomers for their completely non-anesthetic teeth cleaning. He also identified a group of dogs that typically went regularly to the veterinarian for full cleaning with, here's the key, with anesthesia or some really heavy sedation where the appropriate procedures could be done. 
And so what he did is he followed these dogs for a few years. It was either three or four. I'm not sure. And what he did was he told these clients that were going to the groomers that he was doing a study and he wanted to know if they could stop by his office both before and after their cleanings at these groomers and or these non-anesthetic dentists that are floating around in their vans in many communities. And he also did the same for the group that was going to veterinarians. So what, what he did was he took pre and post pictures. But what he also did that he didn't really advertise, because that's the key to his study, he was doing post x-rays as well as pictures. So they came in, took pictures of the mouth. The mouth looked horrendous. They went to the respective, whether it was the veterinarian or it was the groomers, and these were regulars. These are people that were going in regularly, so it was good. They were going at least one, well, at least once a year, probably maybe even maybe even uh, twice a year. And the post pictures were actually pretty darn good, and I'm not surprised because I've I've seen my techs do it, and they've done a, an amazing job. I'm so impressed. But he took X-rays and he printed this part of his paper shows the differences in the bone in the jaw, in the sulci of the teeth, in the group that had full dental anesthesia with their cleanings and polishing versus the group that didn't. And that's where you see an amazing difference. And I got to tell you, that's when I was sold. That's when I said to my dental hygienist, guys, I know you do a great job and the outside of the tooth looks great, but you are missing one of the most important parts and that's getting deep inside. So I advise everyone here, everyone listening, that if you still want to go to a groomer, maybe do that in the middle. Like if you go normally once a year, go at the six-month part. They do a nice job. They will get rid of most of that plaque on the tooth surface, and the teeth will look good. If there's less plaque on the outside, it'll put less pressure on the gums. It won't deepen the pockets. I'm not saying there's no advantage to it, but don't rely on it exclusively because you will be burned or not you, your pets will be burned. And it's going to cost you later. It's going to cost you in more extensive veterinary care, cleanings, lost teeth, maybe even root canals. If you're going to go that to that extent, whatever, you're not doing your pets or yourselves a service by doing this all the time. So anyway, time for a quick break. We're going to uh, be right back here at Pet Life Radio's Ask Vets with Dr. Jeff. Don't go away. And uh, we'll see you in a minute. We'll be right back, right after these messages. Stay tuned. We mature, handsome types need a little special attention. Does your dog suffer from joint and arthritis pain? Deteriorating muscle and joint problems are very common in aging dogs. It's easy to alleviate your dog's discomfort at home with ProSense. ProSense joint care products can help make your dog's life as pain-free as possible, providing effective relief for flare-ups and also lubricate and strengthen damaged cartilage. ProSense products are veterinary formulated and recommended to ensure the very best for your pet. Try ProSense today. Your dog will thank you for it. Pets love life. Love them back with ProSense. At Red Barn, our pet food ingredients work overtime. They aren't just there for show. Dandelion greens work to maintain a healthy digestive system. Salmon oil works to enhance the immune system. Green-lipped mussels work to support joint health. These hard-working ingredients support your dog's active, healthy life. Look at the label. We want you to. Red Barn Naturals Pet Food. Simply the best. Find it in your local pet specialty store. Try our grain-free stews. The only pet food with Red Barn Bully Sticks. It's designerpetsweaters.com. Hand-knitted designer sweaters for your precious pup or cool cat. Beautiful couture patterns for your pets, including custom-knitted formal wear, casual wear, yachting, and even sports-themed. Many designer pet sweaters include feathered tammy hats, top hats, and a lot of sparkle. Each sweater includes leg loops, front paw sleeves, and leash opening. Visit designerpetsweaters.com to order your four-legged fashions today. Your pets will stay warm for the winter and be runway ready. Large or small, we fit them all. Designerpetsweaters.com Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Dot com. <laughs> Pet 
And welcome back. You're here once again live with Dr. Jeff Werber, your host here on Pet Life Radio. Ask the best with Dr. Jeff. If you want to call in, if you uh, if you've had any experience with dentistry, it's good or bad, either at a non-anesthetic groomer or at a veterinarian, I want to hear from you now. Give us a call. Let's talk about it. My number to reach me is 877-385-8882. Or if you're listening, you're logging on to Pet Life Radio, just go into the chat area and you can see a link and you can join us right here on Google Hangouts and uh, we can talk live. Interestingly, in many states, California being one of them, because of studies like this and because of the false sense of security that pet owners have when they take their dogs to a groomer for dental cleaning, it is now a practice act part of California that if anyone touches a non-veterinarian, not under the direct supervision of a veterinarian, touches a pet's tooth with a metallic object, i.e. a scraper, tartar scraper, they are, in essence, by law, practicing veterinary medicine without a license. And uh, that is, it's a penalty and punishable. So you should also make sure that in the states you're going to, that if you go to such a place, there is a veterinarian, at least on the premises, and make sure what their state's practice act is, because we don't want that person getting into trouble. But I think you really need to do a little homework. So um, I'm here, 877-385-8882. Give me a call. Let's talk about this because I want to know if you've had bad experiences or what is your fear other than the money? So what we do is there are some new heavy sedatives on the phone. We call it Twilight Dental. It's a, a sedative that we use. It's called Dextomator. We use add a pain medication, butorphanol. They are down enough. They can be intubated. We give them oxygen during the procedure. Also having a tube down their throat helps because what it does is it prevents the aerosolized bacteria that you are freeing up from the ultrasonic scaling from being inhaled into the lungs. So it's also safer for them. And also allows us, if we need to, if there are uh, some issues, we can turn on the gas a little bit. And um, uh, like if we have an extraction or if we have some major gum work or we have to do a little gingival flap procedure, something, once we get in there to identify, we see a slab fracture that needs to be fixed then we'll go ahead and just turn on our gas. They're already intubated. They already have their oxygen going. So it's really fantastic. And we call it our twilight dental. So as long as the pet's in good health and the procedure before us, at least as we know to start, is fairly routine, we can do the twilight anesthesia. It's less expensive. Clients love it, but we get to use the same equipment that we would normally. We get to use the ultrasonic scaler. We get to do some deep scraping. We get to do the polishing. So it's really a great way to go. So Anyway, I read also something very interesting, and we're going to change now from dentistry to a particular cat issue, and something that might surprise you, because it did surprise me a little bit, not that it occurs, but to what extent it occurs, and that's the following. So you have this older cat, and he or she stops using the litter box, or he or she is no longer jumping up on that high perch to use a scratch post, and what do we attribute it to? We attribute it to just age, and they're getting a little senile. And maybe they're a little mad at you. We know that cats like to get back at you when they're mad. Something's changed. Their diet, your schedule, something. And they start, you know, urinating or defecating outside their box. I get it. We all, it happens to everyone. That's cats. But what you may not have realized is the reason for this behavior, believe it or not, is joint disease, arthritis. And it is guesstimated that 90% of cats above the age of 12, 12 or older, have some degree of osteoarthrosis or, or arthritis, call it what you will, degenerative joint disease, enough that it actually can affect their desire, their ability to crawl up into that litter box if you have one of those litter boxes with high sides or to make that jump onto the perch to the scratching post. And I mean, if we were talking about German Shepherds or Rottweilers or Labradors or Goldens or something like that, oh, we get that in a heartbeat. But who would ever think, because, I mean, small breeds, though some do, but most oh, don't suffer the same degree of arthritic changes that the dogs do, the, the large breeds. So who would think that a cat to the tune of 90% could also get arthritis? And with that joint pain comes a lot of these behavior changes. So it's something that when you have this older cat that starts to experiencing these changes and your veterinarian proposes that maybe this could be joints, don't think they're nuts. If they want to take x-rays, let them. There are some very safe, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories for cats. Interestingly, cats typically 
don't do well on the non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. They do much better on the steroidal anti-inflammatories. They tolerate steroids way better than dogs do, way better than we do. And therefore, a lot of times you need some anti-inflammatory properties in a cat. It's okay to use steroids. You can't even get away with using them every day, unlike dogs that are, or people for that fact that you want to start alternating. So I think it's something that you should be aware of. It's a real issue. So talk to your veterinarian. There are some very uh, effective non-drug modalities. There, I mean, you could put these cats on glucosamine supplements just like you would a dog. There are some laser therapy, cold laser, works extremely well, acupuncture, chiropractic. These are all modalities that 30 years ago, we used to lab. Well, we didn't have laser therapy then, but, but things like acupuncture and, and, and chiropractic. I mean, anybody who proposed sending a dog to a chiropractor or to, uh, to an acupuncturist, they thought they were nuts. And now it's part of treatment. There are so many doctors now going through courses to become certified in chiropractic, to become certified in acupuncture. And I personally have seen it work because I usually have associates that do acupuncture, and it is amazing. So something to keep in mind, and I have been employing cold laser. They call it therapeutic laser in my practice now for, for oh, I don't know, eight years. And it is also rather amazing. We've had some great success. I remember the very first time I wanted to use it, it was a dog, a little Bichon Frise. And the dog was, part of the complaints was very slow getting up, but refused to go upstairs for the last several months. So the owners had to carry him up and downstairs. So I had just purchased my laser. I had spoken to a good friend of mine, a colleague, also interestingly in Colorado, Robin Downing, Dr. Downing, who is one of the first veterinarians to become board certified by the American Academy of Pain Management, which it actually is for MDs. And now there are a number of veterinarians involved, but she was the first veterinarian. And um, I asked her about cold laser and she says, and, and by the way, Robin is also certified in acupuncture. And she told me it is amazing. So with her endorsement, I went ahead and bought the machine, but I was a little nervous on the very first time using it that I'm going to use it for the very first time on a dog with no backup. So one of my colleagues, one of my associates was certified in acupuncture. So I figured, ah, here's my plan. So this is why I can't look that bad. We're going to do the laser, but we're also doing acupuncture treatment. Now, the hope was that one of the two of them would do some work, even though with, with laser, we tell clients, don't expect a change for maybe till after the third treatment. And we recommend treating every five to seven days. So anyway, wouldn't you know it that the day that this woman came in with her Bichon, my associate wasn't there to do the acupuncture. So now it was stuck just on me. So I, I very heavily played up the point that just know that it, it takes more than one treatment for you to see a change. So don't be surprised if by next week when I have you come back, we're still not doing that well. It's going to take some time. I would give it at least three treatments, maybe even four. And I was really trying to sugarcoat this because I was convinced that nothing was going to happen. So P.S., she comes in and we do the treatment. And the next week she comes in, it was one week later, seven days later, and she comes traipsing through that front door, that dog in tow. And it had this gate that was just one happy dog gate. And she goes, you won't believe it. Like two days after your treatment, she was running up and down the stairs. And I said, oh my God, first of all, <laughs> thank heaven. I didn't look terrible by doing this thing. It was like hocus pocus, not going to work. But the fact that it worked after one treatment, so that sold me. And now I use it for so many things. We use it post-operatively. It induces healing. It reduces inflammation. It reduces pain. We use it with arthritis. We use it with cauticoina syndrome, which is lumbosacral instability. We use it with any, any joint injury, even just muscular pain. A dog throws it back. Whatever it is, it works extremely well. If you if you even um, do a dental and there's a lot of oral work needing to be done, so the gums are just raw afterwards and they're so sore. I mean, we're going to send home a pain medication. We're going to send home something for pain. So why not do a laser treatment as well? So for your cats that you want to avoid the drugs, think laser, think acupuncture, think chiropractic, think supplement. But the idea is to remember and realize that it is a much more common problem than you would have ever thought. And certainly than even some of your times your veterinarian would have thought 90% of cats over the age of 12. So that's hurts. And then I wanted to get to another study, but we're going to save it for next week because I thought it was really, really fun. And it has to do with how much does a mama dog really love 
or puppies. So keep that in mind. We'll get to the answer. I, I found something <laughs> rather comical, actually. So anyway, thanks for being here with me here on Pet Life Radio's Ask the Vets. I want to thank our sponsors, ProSense Pet Products. Go to Walmart, go to Target, go to your mass retailer, pick up some ProSense and Kong. Um, and uh, again, next week, try to come come online. Don't be afraid. I want to, I want to see you. So I know you're really there listening. Hopefully you're getting some benefit from the things we talk about. And also send me an email. So if we have any questions, any, any topic that you'd like discussed, any problem your pet might be having that you'd like a better understanding about, go ahead and send me an email to drjeff, drjeff at petliferadio.com. We'll be uh, here live next week with you and I'll be in Park City, Utah. See you then. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.